Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. In today's video, I'm taking out the other of the new destroyers, the Gurustus Pirates Mumba class destroyer. This is a ship I've actually been really excited to fly for quite some time. Angel Cartel and Garistus Pirates are absolutely my two favourite pirate factions. I really enjoy the Garistus ships. I think they can be a lot of fun. They're geared quite heavily around uh, like ratting. They work really well in PvE. So I was very eager to get my hands on one of these. And again, humongous thank you and shout out to Burning Souls for supplying this for me. These have actually gone a lot cheaper on the market now at Jita, which means they're actually viable to start running. They're not as expensive as they used to be. Still not the best option, but you know, 1 billion is still better than the 20 billion that they started at. But anyway, I'm going to take this out into some abyssal dead spaces. We're going to talk about how this ship works, what I like about it, what I dislike about it, and where I see it kind of falling into the meta, I suppose you could call it, when these ships become a little bit cheaper down the line. We'll also talk about how you source these and how you will source them later on. Anyway, if you do enjoy this video, find it useful, let me know, hit like on it, drop a comment down below, come support me on Patreon, drop a tip into my PayPal tip jar, or buy some merch off my Redbubble store. I will also be opening up a new merchandise store soon, linked directly here on YouTube, it will appear below the video. It's very excited about that if and when I get it off the ground. Finally, if you are relatively new to EVE Online, I have a referral link in the description of this video. You can click that and get 1 million free skill points. You don't even actually have to be new to EVE Online if you just haven't used a referral link before. You could be a day one player, but if you haven't used a referral link, you can get yourself 1 million free skill points. Last but by no means least, also in that description is the Catskull Community Discord link. That is where you want to come if you want to apply to the Catskull Cartel in-game, and if you just want have a conversation with a load of really cool EVE Online players. All that said and done then, let's jump right into talking about the Guristus Pirates Mumba. First of all then, a note about the Mumba and my intentions with it. Now, this is a Guristus Pirates ship. I'm always a big fan of the Guristus Pirates. I love their lore and their backstory. I enjoy how the ships fly. I've flown the Worm, the Heel of the Rattlesnake for a long time. So I'm kind of excited to be able to get my hands on the Mumba and eventually the Gator when that launches too. Now, when looking at this ship and trying to decide what I wanted to do with it, that kind of came down to what knowledge I had of the rest of the Garistus Pirates ships. Notably, the Worm and the Healer. Those are the two that I've flown the most in EVE Online, and they kind of tend to be used by me, at least, for running Abyssal Dead Spaces. So I thought, right, okay, if I use the Worm and the Healer to run Abyssals, maybe the Mumba might be kind of a stopgap between the two. It's ridiculously expensive at the moment, but it should eventually settle down to a point where it is cheaper than the Healer, more expensive than the Worm, and sort of hopefully effectively between the two also. I wanted to see how far I could push it, and looking at its stats, well, it's a Gurister's ship, it's got those bonuses to Kinetic and Thermal, so I thought, let's try some Firestorms, let's try some Gammas and see how it does. I also really like the name Mumba. I've just spent seven years living in Zimbabwe and Mumbas, or rather Green Mumbas and Black Mumbas, are two snakes that I had to be ridiculously aware of. They are hyper aggressive and astonishingly venomous. And when you're living in a country that doesn't actually have the anti-venom anymore due to, well, reasons, yeah, it's one of those snakes that you really pay attention and look out for because you get bitten by that thing, you are dead. There is no two ways about it. And so I was kind of hoping the Mumba would live up to that name. I do want to talk about the visuals very briefly before we get into the stats. I know a lot of people complain that the Guristus ships are basically just reskins of the standard Kaldari vessels, and I kind of agree to a certain extent, but disagree to a further extent. Now, the entire point of the Gurista ships is that, yes, they are supposed to be copies of the Kaldari vessels. There's this whole back and forth of who is the one actually designing these vessels. Is it the rabbit or is it uh, the, the Kaldari navy? Who is stealing from who? And it's not quite as clear cut as you might think. There are several reasons to believe that it could actually be the Guristus that are designing on behalf of the Kaldari navy. And the theft, in inverted commas, is just the story that the public is fed. I don't know. That said, if you look at something like the Korax and then compare it to the Stork, there are subtle differences. You can clearly see that the Stork is based on the Korax, but it does have its own unique attributes and aspects. 
I kind of wish they did a little bit more of that with the Ghost of Ships. I'm hoping that with all the updates we've had, graphically in things like Viridian, that they may actually go back and redo some of these at some point in the future. Same with the Serpentis ships that are, you know, obviously just Galente ships with a reskin. Adding just some minor differences to the hull shape, I think could be a really cool way of showing that it is essentially a looted or modified Corax. Anyway, enough about the visuals. Let's go back to talking about the stats. We'll then take a look at the fit and showcase how well this can actually do. So essentially, we have being a Gurista ship's bonuses from Kaldari and Galente racial skills, obviously Destroyer for the Mumba. The Kaldari Destroyer skill gives us a 4% bonus to all shield resistances and the Galente Destroyer gives us a 10% bonus to kinetic and thermal missile damage. You can probably undock this and get it to work at four on each of those. That said, it is a pirate faction ship, and even when the cost comes down, it's not the cheapest vessel out there, so I'd strongly recommend getting both of those to five. 50% bonus to kinetic and thermal missile damage, 20% bonus to all shield resistances. That's pretty nice, right? And a roll bonus here, 300% bonus to light combat drone damage and hit points. Now, you can only launch two light drones at a time out of the Mumba. But this means that each of those counts as if they were four drones. So you've essentially got a destroyer that is launching, quote unquote, eight drones worth of EHP and damage. That's a lot. That is a lot of damage coming off one very small little ship. And if we were to go through its attributes as well, you'll see that it's actually a surprisingly tanky vessel. In fact, the biggest problem I had with this was actually it's power grid and CPU, which both feel a little bit lacking. And genuinely, if CCP are open to feedback on these vessels right now, I would request a little bit more PG and a little bit more CPU, just because it feels really hamstrung by those. Like, I I put a topic up on the EVE Reddit recently, and a lot of people going, oh, oh my god, you're an idiot, why are you using this, why are you using that? And it's like, you clearly haven't actually sat down with this ship, because if you were asking the question, why aren't I using a medium shield booster, it's because we physically don't have the freaking fitting to fit it. Anyway, talking about the fitting, let's have a look at that. So this is the fit that I came up with. Is it perfect? No. Is it linked in the description down below? Yes, absolutely. Does it run firestorms and gammas? Yeah. Yeah, it really, really does. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this is, you know, a, a surprisingly fun ship to try and fit due to those aforementioned constraints. That said, I would still like to have those restraints just relaxed a little. Now, we know it's going to be a missile ship, we know it's going to be a drone ship, we know it's going to be using shields, because it's Guristus, and taking a brief look at the stats tells you exactly that. The power grid and the CPU, however, are big, big issues. I mean, if you're looking at the fit here, this is me with running at advanced weapons upgrades, five CPU management, five uh, power grid management, five, most of those skills that affect your fitting possibilities. <clears throat> I'm sitting at five on, and yet we are still pretty much maxed out on both of these, and we've got some modules in here that are there purely to give us a bit more space to work with. So anyway, let's look at the fit. Our high slots have gone for light missile launcher twos. We're using Inferno Fury light missiles and getting 32 kilometer range out of them. To me, that's plenty. I don't think I would need to carry any longer range versions like Kaldari navies or whatever. <clears throat> To me, that 32 kilometers is absolutely fine. We're getting really strong damage out of that. 375.5 DPS, 1716 on Alpha Strike is really quite potent. There's a lot coming off this. 163.8 of that is from the drones, but that means a good solid half of the DPS coming out of this is 100% from those missiles. And 32 kilometer range just feels like a really good thing. For our mid slots, I knew I wanted shield tank. I did try a small shield booster, that would fit just fine. I tried to fit in medium shield boosters, even the ones that have lower power grid requirements. No, could not get one in with the power grid. So I've gone for medium ancillary shield booster. And you might be thinking, hang on, Benzie, that's crazy. Why would you do that? You've only got nine charges before this thing absolutely obliterates your capacitor. Well, the idea is that you only need those nine charges and then you can just reload before moving into the next room. And for the most part, that worked really, really well. It's not perfect, as we'll see in a few minutes, but it got the job done really well in T1s at the very least, and was capable of doing T2s. 
to support that medium and ciliary shield booster, I went for a copacetic compact shield boost amplifier alongside a compact multi-spectrum shield hardener. And again, when people saw the kill mail on this, they're like, oh my god, why are you using compacts? Like, that's way too cap heavy. Because otherwise I couldn't fit one. All right, I could not fit a shield hardener too. It does not cram in there with that CPU. And that is with me in the low slots using a deuce coprocessor. Like seriously, we had to put in a deuce here to get more CPU. Finally, for the mid slots then, one Mega Newton Afterburner 2. This, I probably could have shrunk it down a little bit with a compact or blinging it up to like a gisty or something there to, you know, reduce the fitting requirements. But again, I found that that didn't get me my ultimate goal of having a proper shield booster in here. So I just stuck with the cheap version. Hang on, Benzie, why are you using cheap? It's a 7.8 billion-esque ship. Yeah, it is, but if I mouse over that, you'll see that 7.6 billion of that is just the hull. And already that hull is actually down to about 1.2 on Jita. I bought two more this morning. I've already shipped them out for 1.2 billion each. They will get even cheaper than that. Once November comes around and you no longer have to jump through all the major hoops to get them on the blueprint when it's just LP store, that will drop even further. And I estimate you're probably going to be looking around about the 300 million-esque mark for the hull. At which point, rather than a 7.8 billion fit, you're actually looking at about 5 mil 500 million at that point in time, which isn't too bad considering this is a pirate faction ship. That makes it still cheaper than a healer, a little bit more expensive than a worm, and hopefully capable of doing between the two. The final in the low slots then is a C3X Hiva Saitsuo Ballistic Control System, and please do not make me try and repeat that. I'm astonished I got that somewhat right first time through there. Um, again, people saying, why are you using ballistic control systems, not a drone damage amplifier? Doesn't it get more damage from the drones than it does from the missiles? Yes, and that's why I'm using the C3X Hiva because that's giving me 10% rate of fire bonus, 10% missile damage bonus, and 15% drone damage bonus all in one low slot and again you could try and double up on your drones but then you hit a medium automata room and oh no everything goes bad the deviant automata suppressors or whatever they're called everything goes absolutely peak tong and you're utterly wrecked so i like to have that split I do like that split. It's also why I've gone for the Small Warhead Califaction Catalyst 1 here. Um, this is sufficient for me to essentially up the uh, the Alpha Strike on these missiles. The reason I went for that rather than a Bay Loading Accelerator is because I found that with the Bay Loading Accelerator, I was almost killing a lot of the ships in one volley. And though thus having a faster firing second volley still meant that I was using four faster firing volleys rather than just two volleys. Putting in the Califaction Catalyst, I found that I was one-shotting a lot of, like, the Tessellas specifically. So swapping to the Califaction Catalyst meant I actually one-shotted them. And it's much, much better, in my opinion, to put your drones on one Tessella, then just one-shot the second one, then one-shot the third one, then swap your drones to a fourth one, and then one-shot the fifth one. That kind of thing. It's much faster to clear a room that way than having the faster cycle time. The faster cycle time definitely would benefit if I were, you know, coming up against a lot of the battleships and things like that, but I found those two cellar rooms were going down much quicker using the califaction rather than bay loading. Our other two rigs, small thermal shield reinforcer and small EM shield reinforcer. Again, only ones, um, A, because they're what I had on hand, and B, because calibration is a thing. Um, but that gets us pretty nice stats, 57 up to 71 across our resistance profile. That's not what caused me to lose this ship, all right? It's not low resistances or anything like that. It is just that... The, uh, I think what a lot of people didn't understand when I was talking about this, and you will see this later, is that essentially, yeah, I could bling things out even more, but it w still wouldn't have been enough to save me. It's not like I just died. It's no, I got utterly wrecked in that final room. And so therefore, blinging things up and tuning a little bit on the upwards wouldn't have saved me. I would have, instead of having a 7.8 billion-esque loss mail, I would have had like a 9 billion-esque loss mail instead. It's still not going to change the outcome. It's not enough to change it. This means to me that the question of can we run Abyssal Dead Spaces in the Mumba is a categorical yes. This thing runs T1s as an absolute breeze. I ran T1 Gammas, T1 Firestorms, not an issue in any of those at all. Tier 2s, on the other hand, I run a couple of Gammas, absolutely fine. I run a couple of Firestorms, absolutely fine. Until the third Firestorm took me off the grid. That was, yeah, not a fun place to be. It, it happens, it happens. And I went into this knowing that I was going to be pushing the envelope on what this ship could possibly achieve. And I'm glad, I'm glad. 
I got to see it go all the way up to T2, and it does T2s. It's, there's probably some changes to the fit, or using boosters and implants that could push it into survivability in tier two. I don't, I don't know. Maybe you've got some ideas. I'd love to hear it in the comment section down below. But I reckon that the power of this is going to be duoing them. I think having two Mumbas together in a T3, maybe even a tier four, perhaps even a tier five. You know, you can dual box T5 um, with something like a Jackdaw. So maybe you can do it with Mumbas. I don't see why you shouldn't be able to, if I'm being completely honest. I reckon you can get at least two, uh, T4 in dual boxing, and thus, once the price drops on these, I will go out there with some friends, because I don't multi-box, um, and we'll run some of these together and see if that does actually work. But for now, this is what I was running, and let's show it in action. So here we are in a Tech 1 Firestorm. I want to showcase the Tech 1s first of all, just to kind of give you a feel of the difference between them. So I land in the room, we activate our tank and our propulsion. I'm going to start moving towards that biocombative cache. We then have two Skybreaker Dispiro troops, and that's never a fun thing for a drone ship to see, because those uh, entrop not entropic disintegrators, sorry, Vorton projectors, are going to hit the drones and deal really quite heavy damage to those. Now, looking at things as well, I've also got a medium range Deviant Automata Suppressor. That's not a fun thing for a drone pilot to see either, and that's why I don't like 100% relying on drones in Abyssals, because there are things that can just completely screw that over. You'll see, though, these Skybreaker Dispiro troops going down really, really quickly. I've withdrawn my drones because one of those Hobgoblins was taking a bit more damage than I would like it to, but again, no problems at all. We take both of those Dispiro troops down. We can now shoot at the biocompetitive cache and move into the next room. Now, if I was being sensible here, I would shield boost up with the ancillary shield booster, then reload it and use the time between rooms just to make sure I've got nine, I've got full shields and nine charges loaded in there. The theory is that I should never really need more than nine charges at any one time. Um, I should therefore be able to finish a room reload and be fully set ready for the next room before we go in. That's my theory. I don't really like it. I just want to say now I'm not a big fan of using an ancillary shield booster here in an Abyssal Dead Space. It's a flawed theory, but it does work at Tech 1 at least. I just kind of, I don't know. I don't know. Again, without the ability to fit an MSB, I, it, it, it's kind of what you have to work with. I wish you had just that little bit more fitting in here to fit an MSB. Maybe someone again can play around with this fit and get that to actually work. I couldn't. Better minds than me have, you know, these kind of things. You may have also noticed, if you're looking intently now at my inventory, um, there is one big error in there. I'll see if you can spot it before I spotted it in game. But anyway, room number two, striking Kikimura, striking Damovic. Again, shouldn't be a problem. We're going to send our drones on uh, the, well, on the Damovic and the missiles on the Kikimura. I'm actually going to split the DPS just to see how those kind of work side by side. And yeah, those were some quite nice hits. Look at that damage from the drones and again from the missiles. We're going down nice and quickly here. I'm just moving towards that biocompetitive cache to loot it. But yeah, we're just going to keep going and blapping things here. I'm actually going to move both things onto the Kikimura um, just to kill that a little bit faster. Because I'm thinking, oh, that spool time could be a problem if I'm an idiot with this. And I am having to use uh, the ancillary shield booster just to keep up with that damage a little bit. But you see... This is the point where I should probably be considering turning off that medium ancillary. Do there we are. Yes, I do. Yes, I actually do remember to do that. Anyway, that Damovic is down. And now we are going to shoot the biocompetitive cache and loot it and move into the next room. And it's at this point that I realize the problem. Yeah. If you haven't spotted it already, I'm trying to right click and reload that ancillary shield booster. Why can't it reload? Why can't it reload? Now, I'm a little bit confused at this point, so I actually even open up the fitting screen and sit there and go, well, can I drag it out of my cargo? Oh, that's the problem. I don't have the cap charges in my cargo hold. Oops. Okay, that could be a problem. But we've got three, three uses left. Three uses left before that is going to absolutely tank my capacitor in order to activate it. Fingers crossed the next room is uh, a little bit nicer and we're not going to have to worry too much about taking big, big damage. Pull the drones back, activate the gate, and off we go to the third room of this Tech 1 Firestorm Abyssal Dead Space. Let's just stack everything in the inventory so that, you know, it looks a little bit neater in there. Just in case I have visitors over. You know, you never know. You never know. <laughs> what am I saying? What am I saying? Anyway, through the transfer conduit, 
into the third and final room of this particular tech one. There we go. Oh, I miss that sound. I love the sound effect of those gates. Eve's sound design is just exceptional. And here we are. Perfect. Biocompetitive cache. Load of spark needle to sellers. Here's where we can showcase that kind of fighting style I was talking about earlier. We're going to launch the drones. We're going to send the drones against one of these ships. Like so. They're a little bit out of range of the missiles. Screw it. We're just going to launch the missiles as well. Okay, now we're going to do the split. So we put the drones on the 14 kilometer on one of them and missiles on the other. And watch what happens. Oh look, the missiles kill it in one hit. Thanks to the Califaction Catalyst. Without the Califaction Catalyst, that just becomes a one, uh, becomes a two hit. And the two hits with the two cycle times means you're using more ammunition and taking longer to kill things, right? This, to me, that's why I use the Califaction Catalyst here. I actually don't hit properly on that one. We do take a little bit of uh, an extra cycle to kill, but for the most part, it means one shot, one kill. Saves you on ammo and actually makes the runs faster as well. But there we are. That's the biocompetitive cash down and moving then on out of this abyssal dead space. Now, I don't want to just end it here for the tranquils because I do want to showcase what it's like when you come up some of, against some of the battleships just to show you how we handle those. So this was another T1 Firestorm, and in the third and final room of this one, there's a Photic Abyssal Overmind and a Spark Needle to sell her. Now, I was a little bit worried about this, because I'm thinking, oh crikey, that's a big ship, and is the Ancillary Shield Booster actually going to handle this? Then I realised, I've got 36 kilometer range on everything, I can just orbit at 35 kilometers and hopefully be small enough and fast enough that that Photic Abyssal Overmind just can't handle me. Now, I did also have a Charybdis come up in one of these as well. Uh, the Charybdis, I'm going to just point out, I forgot to hit record in that run. Um, but again, that you can't just orbit because it does run to the edge of the arena um, and therefore you will just orbit out. But what you do is you just follow it to the edge of the arena and then fly backwards and forwards in front of it in a straight line. Keep your, your traversal up. Um, and just kind of move back and forward manually so that you don't orbit out of the arena, but you're kind of still ke you're keeping that 30 odd kilometer range on it. Um, and you can see there is no problem here. Absolutely no problem at all. It goes down fairly quickly, the, uh, the Abyssal Overmind. It's not the fastest kill. It's a battleship. You know, these do take time to go down, but it's not a problem. It's not like, oh, if we got three of these rooms, that's a failed run. No, the room is fast enough that if I had three of this exact room, not going to have an issue. And the Charybdis as well, the Charybdis Tyranos, not an issue either because same kind of thing. It actually goes down remarkably quickly on account of it not having all of its full stats and that when you start shooting. But that's enough for the Tech 1s. Let's have a look at the Tech 2s. Agitated Firestorm Filament active into the first room. Let's have a look at what we've got. Nope, not the FPS monitor, meant to throw out the drones instead. Oops. Anyway, we're in, we're in a Lucifer room. Cinnables, that could be a little bit scary. Dramiel and a Fury there as well. How are we going to cope with this? Turns out actually remarkably well. Uh, a little bit of shield boosting here just to take up some of the damage that I am taking, but cycle it carefully and the ancillary is going to hold out absolutely fine. I hope. I hope. Anyway, the Dramiel is down. We're going after the Fury next. Not a problem down nice and quickly. We're going to orbit that Cinnable and we're going to orbit fairly tightly. Yeah, five kilometers is fine. There we go. We're going to just try and rip that down quickly and see if uh, if that's going to work. Should I really split the DPS? No, I shouldn't be splitting the DPS. There we are. Let's orbit one of the Cinnables and kill them, the one that I'm not going to have the traversal up against. You'll notice I'm orbiting the Cinnable at 11 kilometers. Well, the, I'm orbiting the middle Cinnable in, uh, as far as my locks go there, the one on the left. That is to keep my traversal up against it. I'm going to kill the other one first, though, because that's the one that's going to be able to hit me easier. This one that I'm now orbiting is going to really struggle to hit me. And you'll see that actually Shield Booster has done its job. We've made it quite comfortably all this way through. Not a problem. Cool. Nice and simple. We are running a little bit low on capacitor, though, which again is something I do wish there was a way for me to fix but I'm going to reload those shield boosters and uh, reload the ancillary. It's a minute of time, but you'll see it should be done by time that we reach the next room. 
So we're going to loot that cache. Really don't like having to fly this with the afterburner off, but there we are. Once we're above sort of the maximum capacitor charge threshold, um, we can start to activate that uh, afterburner again. And through we go. Cool. Nice and simple. Ancillary has nearly, uh, it's halfway through reloading. So by time I am through the gate, we should be okay. Or at least by time I'm taking damage on the other side. There we are. Now, someone was asking, actually, why don't I often group my drones? I do, but I keep getting this weird bug where it'll tell me that, oh, you can't put drones of different types in the same group. And it's like, I'm not. They're two Hobgoblin 2s. Like, why, why is that an issue? But there we are. Anyway, we are going into the second room now. I've got my groups sorted. We're charged, recharged, reloaded. We've got Tangling Kikimura, Striking Drekovax, and a Striking Damovic. Okay, that could be a little bit scary. Let's see how we hold up. Start locking onto things. There we go. Same approach as usual. This time, though, I am going to launch everything at the Damovic just to kill it as quickly as I can. Then we'll go after whatever's next. I'm going to set up an orbit against that striking Drekovac because, again, I know these things have decent tracking. Um, I want to try and keep sort of a decent range to it and hopefully it'll keep missing me. Hope I'm doing that right. Again, I'm sure someone in the comment section can correct me. And genuinely, I like being corrected. It's how I learn these things. I'm just here to show you how I'm having fun. If you want to use this ship, here's how you can do it kind of thing. Or here's what worked for me. I'm definitely not saying I'm an expert. And I'm definitely not saying that my fits are absolutely the best and you can't change them. Quite honestly, the more help and advice I get on this kind of stuff, the better my content becomes in future. But there we go. So that tang uh, Tangling Kikimura... Oh dear, it's about to go down nice and easily. There we are. Now, I did let the ancillary shield booster drain me a little bit there. Oops. Oh, well. Should probably be reloading that right about now, Benzie. I'm looking back at myself going, yeah, you should really be reloading that. You should also probably have some of your modules turned off, but mm, yeah, we're about to cap drain ourselves. Oh well, try not to let yourself go below 27% capacitor because that's where your maximum capacitor recharge rate is. And so the further below 27% you go, the slower your capacitor recharge becomes. That can cause big problems. It means that when you're actually at 0%, it's harder to reach 0 to 5% than it is to go from 20 to 25% kind of thing. Your capacitor recharge rate increases over time. Slightly worried, slightly worried that I'm going to be taking a bit of damage into my armor here. Oh boy! Yeah, that's gonna be fun. Let's get that all bit up though now. Hopefully not gonna take the damage. Come on, yep! No damage onto the armor. Look at that. How beautiful that was. Cool. Off we pop. Let's get that biocompetitive cache. And into the third and final room of this tech too. I'm actually gonna skip ahead a little bit so we don't have to watch all the looting. You see, my ancillary is once again reloading. I just topped up my shield, got it right the way back up to maximum, then I've reloaded it to get those charges in, ready for that third and final room. In we go. What do we have in this one? I mean, I know what's coming in this one. You know, I, I flew this, but there we go. We have Spotlight to Seller, Twilight Abyssal Overlord, um, and some more. It's a load of drones, basically. Cool. And one of those is dampening me as well, which is really annoying because I went to lock onto everything and then it's like, nope, nope. There we are, and some spotlighters. Cool. So we're going to try and basically do the same thing we were doing before. We're going to get up a 30 kilometer orbit around that battleship. Try and take as little damage as possible. Use that shield booster sparingly, he says, with it just on full burn cycle right now. There we go. Shoot out that Tessella. Again, doesn't quite go down in one. That whole Califaction Catalyst thing, by the way, it's not flawless. It just seems to work, especially in the T1s. Definitely works better in the T1s than the T2s, but, or at least so far that we've seen here. But I still prefer the Califaction Catalyst to the Bayloading Accelerator, but eh, maybe that's just me. I think a lot of people look at paper DPS and take that as absolute gospel as well. Like they look at the Califaction Catalyst and they look at the uh, the Bayloading Accelerator and go, oh, well, that one gives me more DPS on the fitting screen, so it must be better. No, 
That's that, that's not how damage works. Um, sometimes having the bigger hit is actually better than having faster hits. Allows you to break through armor and that a little bit faster um, through rep cycles. Hitting small but repeatedly is how you play through a rep. Whereas if you're hitting hard but infrequently, you'll break tank faster on things with uh, with, with uh, fast cycles. Anyway, there we go. You can see I've got the orbit set up. We've nearly reloaded on the ancillary shield booster. That's the first tech two that I just wanted to showcase. Let's get to the fun one, shall we? The one everyone's waiting to see. Having survived two Tech 2 Gammas and two Tech 2 Firestorms, I knew I was pushing my luck going back in for a third one, but hey, we've got to push the ship right, we need to see what's going on. First room of this Firestorm Tech 2 Abyssal is a striking Dre uh, Drekovac, striking Kikimora, an anchoring Damovic, and a striking Damovic. That's a decent amount of firepower, so we are going to take these out one by one by one. I'm going to try and get that orbit set up around the Drekovac in a bit, um, same reasons as before, going to keep some range, we're going to get some lovely screenshots of this because why not? May as well show some screenshots, right? This is how I get the screenshots for the uh, for the thumbnails. Congratulations, you get to watch this instead of the nice bit of footage of me pummeling ships into oblivion. But there we go! It's part and parcel of it. So that Drekovac is now down, uh, sorry, the Kikimora is now Damovic, Damovic, the anchoring Damovic. We'll get there in the end, folks. Am anchoring at Damovic is now done. We've just got the three strikings left. And I really want to get that Drekovac off grid because I know it can track nastily and it does a lot of damage. So we're going to try and take that out quickly and efficiently. Now, you'll see I've actually still got the biocompetitive cache set as the orbit point. This could theoretically cost me because I have now just absolutely scuppered my traversal. I'm flying in a straight line towards that Damovic. And yeah, I'm now having to do the whole reload thing. So, oops. Not great. I fly like an idiot so that you don't have to. I screw up so that you don't have to. That's how this works, right? Anyway, that Drekovac is nearly done, so hopefully that's the end of that. I'm not going to take too much more damage on the shield. Please die. Please hurry up and die so that... Ah, halfway through shields. That's not ideal. But there we go. Okay. Striking Kikimura next, let's take that one down. Absolutely fine, we're halfway through shields and the ancillaries are almost recharging. Again, I don't like ancillaries, but it's better than a small. My opinion, at least. It worked. Point is, I tried it and it, it, it's working. Striking Damovic, let's take that out. And then we can move on to the second room. I'm going to scan ahead a little bit here because it's kind of obvious that we're going to be able to take this one down. So let's scan on into room two. Oh boy, room two was the nightmare room waiting to happen. The devoted room. Yeah, this is the room I've been terrified of. And honestly, this is the room I thought was going to kill me. Spoiler alert, this isn't the room that kills me. Yeah, so we've got a devoted knight, two devoted hunters and a devoted lookout. So, Devoted Lookout is currently uh, dropping down my targeting range. We want to get rid of that first and foremost, so that I can actually lock and properly deal with things. There we are, down it goes. On to the Devoted Hunter next. Sansha ships, oh boy, aren't these fun. Really was worried about this at the point when this all happened, but there we go, Devoted Hunter is going down really, really quickly as well. So that doesn't seem to be a problem. I am having to burn that ancillary quite a lot. That's a concern for me because if I keep taking that amount of damage, well, that ancillary is not going to keep up once it suddenly has to reload in two cycles. In one cycle. Oh yeah, there we go, that's the end of that. Now I need to turn that off and reload that or I'm going to cap myself out, thus losing the afterburner and the multi-spectrum. I do really want that reload to happen quickly. Fingers crossed we can hold. Oh look, it's holding. It's actually holding. We're not dying yet. We're not dying yet. This is good. This is good. I'm also at this point kind of noticing that the orbit isn't really helping me here. I'm actually not keeping up the traversal as well as I want because that devoted knight is fast and it's pushing into me, causing me to oblongate my orbit. That's why I double tap in space here. And we're gonna do that then and manually keep the traversal up. And suddenly we're taking a little bit less damage on the shields, he says, as he takes a big hit on the shields. But we're getting a few more misses. Hopefully that ancillary can finish recharging. 
in time before I completely scupper my armor and all of my hull. Oh no, we've taken armor damage. Oh no. But the Devoted Knight's dead. Look at that. Look at that. Cool. Time to burn that ancillary, wrap my shields back up, and move into the third and, quite literally, final room for this mumba. Shields fully recharged, ancillary reloaded. Third and final room. Let's have a look. What do we have? Anchoring Damovic, Harrowing Vedmak, and a Striking Damovic. Oh, okay, it's another Triglav room, and I survived one of those earlier. We should be fine with this, right? Cool, let's get that set up around the Vedmak orbit as we had before. Lock onto everything, and we'll just see what we can do here. Let's get rid of that Anchoring Damovic, uh, Damovic sorry, quite quickly. Because I know that's going to slow me down. It's going to try and slow me and that's going to increase the amount of damage I take, right? Not an ideal situation to be in. Okay, probably should have sent my drones after the Damovic as well, just to kill it as quickly as possible. Um, and anchoring, no, sorry, anchoring is uh, disrupting, sorry, not uh, webs. I'm talking out my backside there. No worries, I made a mistake, you'll, you'll find that memorable. But I'm taking a lot of damage here because again, I'm trying to fly away from the Vedmax, I'm trying to orbit and it's taken me way too long to realize that I'm not actually getting that orbit up here. I've not got traversal up against that Vedmac, and that has cost me a lot. Now I want to get rid of that Vedmac as quickly as possible because it's kind of dealing a lot of damage to me, but maybe I should get rid of the striking Damovic. And oh dear, I left my shield booster running. So now I have completely out tanked myself, which means my multi-spectrum shield hardener is about to go offline, as is my afterburner. I've lost a load of my resistances and I'm about to lose my ability to actually keep up speed. No, that Vedmac is now hitting me for some serious damage. I've got that reload going. I can't get the multi-spectrum online properly. No, down we go. That is definitely a lost there because I didn't get that traversal up early on. That's why I say that ultimately, yeah, I probably could do tech twos with this. I just need to be a better pilot. I'm also only running basic boosters at this point. If I put in some implants and some better boosters, yeah, Tech 2s are definitely within this ship's range, which makes me think Tech 3 or above in duos, absolutely viable. Anyway, there we go, folks. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching a 7.9 billion isk ship explode there. Thanks for watching right the way through to the end. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on the Mumba. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden. Yeah, this guy can't even hit me now. Took, took the mumber out, fine, but can't get the capsule.